Good afternoon. So glad that you are here with us today as we gather together to celebrate God's goodness to us and his work for us. This is the last Sunday of the church year. That means next week we will be starting with our uh, Advent, uh, uh, the season of Advent. It is the beginning of the church year, uh, and it is four weekends then before Christmas, so that means Christmas is rather close, isn't it? As we start counting down the weeks till Christmas, focusing on the coming of the Christ child the second time, the focus of today's uh, Sunday is on his return the second time when he will come, as the Word of God says, to judge the living and the dead, um, to, to come and uh, bring those who believe in him to heaven with him one day. Uh, our fo sermon will be focused on that as we wrap up our three-week week series on While We Wait. Let's begin now with our opening song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading for today is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put under subjection. It is plain that he is expected who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him 
who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. I invite those who are able to rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is from Matthew 25, beginning with verse 31. Again, this is part of Jesus' end times narrative as he is talking about what will happen when he returns in his glory. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? And did not minister to you. Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we continue now by singing uh, the theme song which we've had through these three weeks, rejoice, rejoice, believers.
Let us pray. Oh, Lord, as we gather here today, as we anticipate, as we look forward to the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, which will have no end, Lord, we pray that You would guide us, that You would help us and lead us, that while we wait, we would be doing those things that You desire. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear Your Word. Open our minds to understand, our hearts to believe, and our lives to live. Amen. We're going to continue our series focusing on While We Wait. This is the third and last week, as I mentioned earlier. Next week, we start with uh, the season of Advent. And at While We Wait, in this uh, reading that we had, both readings really focus on the end, the return of Christ, the, the resurrection uh, that we have, and the promise that God gives to us, the promise of life forever with Him. Now, I, I've already talked a little bit to you about how I wait, not very well, but every now and then we have to wait, right? We have to wait. We have no choice. And what do you do while you wait? I just want you to think about that for a moment. What do you do while you wait? Do you um, sit, sit down with your phone and play a game or text friends or whatever? Okay, maybe not you, but I'm guessing there are a lot of high school, college age, even younger than that, who do that very thing. And to be honest, when I have some free time, when I am waiting for something, whether at an airport or having to sit and wait at a doctor's office or something, what do I do? I grab my phone. I read the mail. I play a game. I check my emails. Whatever it is, I just kind of don't use the time the best, right? Now, my wife, when she travels, which she used to do a little bit more than she does now, but when she travels, she would make the most of her time. She would talk about how she got this work done while she was waiting in the airport for her flight to come, or that she was reviewing this while she was flying in the air, um, or she was talking to the, the person next to her, or whatever. She makes the good use of her time. I'm not so much. I tend to waste that time of waiting because I'm already doing something, right? I'm waiting. I can't do anything else. But as we look at our text for today, Jesus is really focusing on that, isn't he? About really what we're doing while we wait. And it doesn't really seem like that on the outset, but well, let's take a look at it. He's talking about it's the sheep and the goat judgment, right? Uh, a very short parallel in many ways. You know, he says it, it, on the end times it will be like a shepherd dividing the sheep from the goats. Sheep will be on the right, right hand side, the goats on the left hand side, and those on the right he will say, Welcome into my kingdom. Those on the left he won't. Um, and it's, it's the understanding that at the time of judgment there will be a reckoning, right? There will be some who go into heaven, life eternal, and there will be some that go into eternal punishment. The world around us wants to talk about, yeah, that most people believe that there's some kind of afterlife, some kind of heaven, but even among Christians, the number is dropping on those who believe that there is also hell, a place of eternal judgment and punishment. But here, as we look at Jesus' words, they, he is very direct in talking about how there is eternal life in heaven and eternal suffering with the, the, the devil and those who work with him. So as we look at this, this passage, we're going to be looking at, at what's the difference between these two groups, right? Right? What's the different be difference between these, and why do some go one way? Why do some go the other way? Is it simply that, that the sheep go one way? They're predestined to be sheep. They go one way. These are predestined to be goats. They go the other way. What is it? We'll look at, get into that a little bit. So we're going to start actually at the end. I'm kind of flipping it around a little bit. I'm going to start with the faithless ones. Not that they have le less faith, but they have no faith at all. Um, and then he, the king, will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, 
into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So the faithless ones now we see are those who are cursed. So why are they cursed, we might ask? What, what's up with that? Uh, and then as he explains that a little bit more in the next one, for I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Now it looks like not just predestined to go to hell, but that they didn't do the work that they were going to do. Almost as if it's showing that, that we go to heaven by our good deeds. Say it isn't so. And then, verse 45, then he will, and they say, when did we see you and not do this for you? And he said, whatever you don't do for the least of these, you didn't do for me. Then he will answer them saying, truly, truly, I say to you, uh, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me, as I said earlier there. Um, in other words, their, their actions were not reflective on, on what God calls us to do. So as we look at people who are, you know, the faithless, the, the goats, in other words, that, that those who are going off into judgment, we need to kind of explore that a little bit, don't we? There are a few different ways that we might see people as being faithless. First of all, maybe it's those who, who see a need and ignore it, right? If we look at this understanding of, of helping people and how important that is, maybe those who are faithless look at the need and say, you know what? God gave those two people good, two good hands and two good feet, a good mind to be able to do the work. They should be able to do the work, so I'm not helping them out because they need to do what they need to do, right? Now, that's easy to do, right, for us sometimes. It's easy for us to kind of be the judge of others. And I know I might be getting some people a little upset when I say that, but, but I think that's one of the bigger problems that, that the church has now is that we judge people. We say, you know what, they need to be doing this, they need to be doing that, and we don't really understand who they are or maybe the struggles or difficulties they're going through. We just simply say that. We say we're not going to do anything. We're ignoring it because, after all, you know, if I give them money, then maybe they'll do something bad with it or, or some other way. And, and, you know, I struggle with that as well. Um, I don't give money to people who come in looking for money. I will give them some groceries. I will fill up their car with gas. Every now and then, we have even paid for a hotel room for someone who needed it, all right? But I, I don't go do, do money, but I try to meet their needs where they are. But sometimes it's hard. We're judgmental, aren't we? And I admit that to myself. If I have someone come up on the street to me asking for a dollar, I'll, I'll, I'll walk by with ignoring them because I know where most likely where it will go. But it still doesn't excuse us from that. The second uh, point there that's often that we do this is, is sometimes we do things for selfish reasons, right? We do th them for selfish reasons. We do them, maybe it's to make ourselves look better in the community around us, right? Look what I did. I'm helping out in this way. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Or maybe it's to, to make ourselves look better in God's eye. Hey, God, did you see what I did there? Did you see how I helped those people there? Did you see how those kids were, were hungry and I, and I was willing to go buy them a cheeseburger at McDonald's and spend $1.09 on them, right? Or, or that I did this or I did that. You know, God, I'm, I must be a nice guy, a good guy if you're going to do that. So, you know, you might want to open up the door to heaven to me a little bit more. But you know what? That is really being faithless, isn't it? Not faithful. Because what are, are we relying upon? Who are we relying upon in order to get to heaven? Ourselves. 
our goodness. It takes no faith to rely upon ourselves. And, but in reality, relying on ourselves will never get us to heaven because we can never do enough. But so often, that's kind of how we do that. We do this almost to, to seem like, like we're trying to please God. And the third, uh, oh, that was the third, is that we do this to, to please God, to earn his, his love for us, thinking that that will help get us in. It's almost as if you could say some of the goats were saying, hey, but Lord, did you see me give that food to those kids and that water to those who were thirsty and, and donate that, that, those closed orphan grain trains so people could be clothed and, and all of those good things that I did? Didn't you see that? And what will God say then? Away from me, for I do not know you. Why? Because we're not trusting in him. We're trusting in ourselves. We're not trusting and believing and having faith in the only one who can deliver us and instead placing it on ourselves. So now let's look at the faithful ones. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. All right. So, um, interesting part there, though. You who are blessed by my Father. Think, hold on to that phrase. We'll get back to that in a bit. The king will say, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food and I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And they will answer, when were you hungry and thirsty and a stranger and naked and sick or in prison? Right? The, the, the righteous will say, when did we do that? We didn't do that for you. And the king will say, truly I say to you, uh, as you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it for me. That's an interesting phrase. If you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. Again, we'll get back to that in a little bit. You know, faith that is full is called to be overflowing. And that's what he's trying to show here. It's not showing that, that we have to do things in order to get into heaven. But what he says is those who are faithful, those who have been blessed by the Father, we have been blessed by the Father, haven't we? Think about it. Think about what he has done for us. First of all, he has given us that faith through the waters of holy baptism, through, through uh, the Word of God as it is read, as we read it. However God worked that faith in you, He gave it to you as a gift. It is by grace that He has given it to you. He has, he has given you faith. And from that faith, faith, He has given you forgiveness. Because that faith just simply isn't in some force out there, but it is in a creator God who came down to this earth to give his son on the cross for you and for me. So we have that forgiveness that separate for, from the sins that separated us from God, and we are his once again. You see, we, are, we have the faith, uh, we have the forgiveness, and we are his family. He has made us his own. And as it says in John 14, Jesus is preparing a place for us. As his family, we have a home in heaven waiting for us. So that's how we are blessed by the Father. Who are those who are cursed? Those who are cursed who are those who don't receive that blessing, who say, no, 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 I don't want that blessing. I can do things on my own, or no, no, no way can I believe in a God who would send his son to die for me. No way, can't believe that. In other words, it's those who have rejected the message of Jesus Christ, rejected Jesus, and have rejected the Father as well. Those who have rejected 
our God. They are cursed. They are cursed, and they will go to the place of eternal suffering, the place of eternal death, a separation for all eternity from God. Those of us who have that faith have our faith full, full of faith, filled by faith. And those who have been filled with faith just don't have enough, but our faith is filled to overflowing, isn't it? Think about Psalm 23. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. A reminder to us of the blessings that God gives to us is more than just enough. It is plentiful, overflowing from our lives, and our faith that we have is to overflow to others. Why did the, why did the righteous ones, by the way, righteous because of, of their goodness? No, righteous because of Jesus. Why did the righteous ones say, I don't remember doing that for you? Because they weren't doing it for them, for the king. They were doing it for the one who is in need. Because faith overflows in the form of love. In love for our neighbor who's in need, who is hungry, who needs that help. Thanksgiving time is a wonderful time to be able to help out people, isn't it? And I know there are a lot of generous people in this congregation. Our uh, uh, 35 or, or 20 uh, baskets that we ask for to be able to deliver to people, we have had wonderful response on that, and we'll, we will be delivering them actually tomorrow afternoon. Uh, a great blessing that God has given to us to be able to share with other people. Um, the, the food bank, the challenge that we have there, being matched by an anonymous person and, and getting those 500 pieces, I think we are well on the way there if we are not there already to be able to, to show that love. To be honest, I think it would be great if we had 1,000 just to show that we are doing more than just enough, just as God has done more than just enough for us. That overflowing goes other ways as well, taking your time to be able to reach out with those who are in, in need, those who are isolated, those who are separated from us through this pandemic. You know, we are called to let that faith, the faith to be filled with faith and to let that faith flow through our lives my brothers and sisters in Christ, on that last day. I, I pray that, that for each of us gathered here, for all of the members of Peace Lutheran Church and many besides who we are yet to go out and share this love to, that God will look at us and, and say, enter into my kingdom. That's our desire, and that's our goal. See, that's what the church is about. That's why if you look on the bullet in the very front part, it says that a family encouraged, a community embraced, everyone saved. It's because of that why those last two, why we exist. Yeah, we embrace our, we encourage our families in the Word of God, but it's so that we can go out to our community, show them love so that they might know Jesus, so they might go to the place of eternal hope and love, that place with our Heavenly Father. May God give us His strength. May God give us His eyes. May God give us that willing heart to reach out to the world around us. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, we give thanks to You for this, this opportunity and the privilege that we have of waiting. And while we wait, Lord, we pray that we wouldn't waste our time on those meaningless things of life that simply take our time, but that you would use us during those, that time to, to share your word, to, to show your love through our actions, through our words, through simply listening to someone who needs to talk. 
Oh, Lord, use us to be your witnesses while we wait for your return. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to rise as we join together and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue now with our prayers. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to our, uh, their needs. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly to rescue us from this uh, veil of tears and bring us to yourself in heaven. But Lord, as we gather here and as we wait, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would strengthen us, that you would remind us of the hope we have in you, that you would lead us to not just have enough faith, but that that faith in you would overflow in love for others so they too might experience that love and that hope, that forgiveness and life forever you have in store for all who believe in you. Guide us, O Lord, as your church, as your individuals, to be your light to our community. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord God, uh, we pray that you would continue to guide those who are serving your church. We pray for all pastors, all directors of Christian education, all teachers, DCOs, and deaconesses, all those who serve in your church to share your love and forgiveness and, uh, with the communities around them. We pray, Lord, also for all who serve as missionaries, that you would keep them safe in a far-off land, that you would remind them of your presence going out before them with the gospel message. We especially hold up to you this day, Julie, the Wolf family, Peter and Lucy and Chelsea, and for all others who, who are sharing your word in the world around us. Guide them so that the numbers of heaven may be increased and so that everybody might know your son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, Lord God, we give thanks to you for all you do for us. We give thanks with Craig and Lisa Brestel, who celebrated 40 years of marriage last week, and Kevin and Kathy Johnson, who celebrated 45 years as well last week. Continue to guide Bob and Wanda Sewell as they celebrate their fifth anniversary, and Keith and Karen Maurer as they celebrate 26 years of marriage this week. Lead and guide these couples and all couples of our congregation that our families might be a place of encouragement and strength where you are proclaimed and your love is shown to one another. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord God, we pray that you would offer your uh, comfort for those who mourn. We pray that you would uh, be with the family and friends of Gary Nelson as they mourn his death. Give them uh, comfort and keep them in your 
loving strength and remind them that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, Lord, we also pray for those who are in need of your healing and strength. Grant them uh, that healing and keep them uh, in your care. Uh, guide them, Lord, so that they might always, every day, see your love in the midst of their suffering. We pray for Carolyn Alms, Jean Britt, Myrna Friedrichsen, Emma Gehring, Ivan Grothaus, uh, Lori Hess, Tiffany Honkin, Mackenzie Kaler, Jean Labins, uh, Greg Labins, Craig Miller, Rod Muller, Alice Plummer, Cadence Redfern, Chopper C, Carrie Smith, Joyce Udy, Jane White, uh, Judy Dietrich, Reed Fulner, Mary Gronthal, Lori Henderson, Diane Holthy, Mark Joseph, Margaret Knox, Larry Meyer, Caitlin Miner, Victoria Osten, Marilyn Rathke, Larry Schmidt, Jean Slazowski, Bill Sieper, uh, Connie Ulrich, and Karen Werdeman. Praying, O oh Lord, that you would be with them, each of them, in their times of struggle. Lord, we pray that you would grant Dan Saney your successful surgery this week. Guide the doctors and all who care for him during this time. Give them the, him the promise of the hope that you are with him and that uh, nothing can separate Dan from your love for him. Grant him your healing and your strength, a successful surgery to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we give thanks to you for all the health care workers, especially during this time of the pandemic. Guide them as they do their work. Grant them wisdom and strength and patience and keep them safe from all harm. Lord, we give thanks to you as well for the many blessings you give to us. We thank you, Lord, for more than abundance food in food, uh, for the uh, housing we have, for the transportation, for our families. Oh, Lord, you have blessed us with so much that it is beyond our understanding. We ask, oh, Lord, that you would guide us so that we might uh, give thanks and praise to you for all the goodness you have given to us. Lord, and now as we come to your altar, we give thanks to you one more time for this gift that you give to us, the gift of your son's body and blood under the bread and the wine in a true mysterious way, a, a, a meal that is small in serving but yet great in power and strength. Lord, we, as we eat this meal for the forgiveness of our sins, we look forward to the day when we will celebrate this meal with you together with all believers in your kingdom. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I invite you to rise as we continue now with the service of the sacrament. A reminder that um, uh, you should all have received um, the bread and the wine as you came in. Uh, a reminder that I will, at the time uh, when it is appropriate, invite you to open up the bread to eat and then to drink as well at that time. It will be after we sing uh, the Agnus Dei or the Lamb of God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created. And you sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to take our sins and be our Savior. With joy we receive the salvation that he accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us to faithfully eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own words. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper when he had given thanks, he blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is a cup of the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Welcome to the Lord's table for he has made all things right. Amen. I invite you now to open up the bread, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given on the cross for you. And now open the cup, take and drink. This is the very blood of Christ given on the cross for you. And now may this very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we give thanks to you for this almighty gift that you have given to us. The gift of the strengthening of our faith, the forgiveness of our sins through your son's very body and blood. We give thanks, O oh Lord, and look forward to that day when we will celebrate it anew in your kingdom, which will have no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We continue now by singing, Thank the Lord.
please be seated. We do have a few announcements uh, before I dismiss you there. Uh, first of all, a reminder that Thanksgiving Day service will be at uh, 9 o'clock here at Peace. We will also be transmitting it on the FM transmitter. So if you are not comfortable coming in here, we just have the one service. If you're not comfortable coming in here um, with others, you can listen to it in the parking lot as well. Well, FM 98.7, 987, remember that. All right. Also, the Men's Connect that was originally scheduled for Tuesday night has been uh, canceled for this month. Uh, we'll see what happens in December. If nothing else, we'll get together uh, hopefully in January. Uh, the Jesse Tree is something that we have been uh, promoting the last few weeks. Um, it is a family uh, box that can be purchased, and there's a tree in there and ornaments you can color put on it, uh, meant for younger families, but actually applicable to all families. If you are interested in that, we do have some in the back. If you ordered them beforehand, they are all waiting in the back there for you to be able to pick up uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, so we encourage you to do that. If you did not order one, you can still join in. This is going to be the, the theme of our uh, Advent series starting the first weekend in, um, in December. Uh, it is on the Jesse tree. There are week, uh, daily devotions that you can take a look at as well. I invite you to pick up this book. They're, they are on the information table. If you would like to follow along, this is a great way to do that. If you ordered a box, don't pick one of these up there because there's one in there already. All right? So if you'd like one, uh, to, again, that follows the theme, feel free to pick one up on your way out. If we need to order more, we will. All right. Those are all of the announcements. Uh, depart in peace. Remember that the, the gentleman will dismiss you starting the rows in the back first.